solution for humanity who is going to take care of the wives why god created us what this cosmic energy the religion is the solution for the things happening all around the world jihad does not mean any war fought by any muslim jihad basically means to strive to struggle the hindus and the muslims will be united he is not cosmic energy is more superior than that quran gives you the solution to the problem of human kind not that we shall despise each other but according to japan india will be the superpower of the world we will be a superpower will be far superior to the american الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن ضل الله وعمل صالحا وقال إن من المسلمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa taala be on all of you. You are most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compiled religion, or any question on propagation of Islam. If there are any questions, you are most welcome, brother and sister. Any sisters have any questions? Brother. Waalaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If a mahr amount was fixed uh, ten years back, and if the husband intends to pay now, so what should the sister do? Should she take the amount which was supposed twenty thousand, or would it increase? This is the answer question. That if a mahr amount was fixed, and suppose husband pays after ten years, if the amount twenty thousand, so will it be the same? If the amount is in rupees, it will remain the same. Therefore, preferably keep the amount in gold, like ten grams gold, twenty grams gold. You know, so if 10 grams gold normally in history the gold always goes up, and now it's gone highest. In India, it has reached the ceiling, the share price and the gold price. There are times that went down again, came up. So therefore, Alhamdulillah, our profit even kept zakat based on gold. He didn't say that if you have 10,000 that time the gold may be just a few hundred rupees. If you had kept two and a half percent on few hundred rupees, all of us would have hardly given any penny. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the Prophet knew. Therefore, it fixed it on gold. So, but if someone says 10 lakh rupees, then it is 10 lakh rupees. So preferable to fix the amount in equivalent to gold, or say I will give 10 grams gold or 20 grams gold as mere. But if it's mentioned as 10,000, 20,000 rupees, so whatever is mentioned, that is the amount. If the husband wants to give more, Alhamdulillah, there's no problem. Wants to give more, but the minimum that he should give is that amount, irrespective of whether the rate goes up or goes down. Many times in the dollar it goes up and down. So whatever the rate is, you have to give that much amount. Hope that answers the question, sister. Any brothers? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Doctor Naik. I would like to know about this commodities market. Is it legal in Islamic per se? Like the stocks have been traded, the equities have been traded on the stock exchanges. There are commodities like gold, silver, agricultural commodities like jowar, bajra, sugar, and all. These things have been traded. So, is it legal with Islamic per se? We well, ask the question that how shares are bought and sold. Is it allowed in Islam? If it is based on Islamic Sharia, it's allowed. If it's not, it's haram. That is the basic answer. Now, many a time when they do trading, they break the Sharia one way or the other. Sometimes they may not break. So, trading in commodities perfectly fine. For example, you buy sugar one hundred rupees, and you mark up a price, and you sell it hundred for no problem. But again, the Sharia says on the essential commodities, you cannot take a percentage of profit more than what has been stipulated. For luxury items, there is no limit in Islam. But for essential commodities, what you eat every day, these there is a Sharia rule for everything. Different different percentages fixed, so that a person doesn't take advantage and stocks a particular good. You know now they know, are sugar come on, or rice come on, or they stock the good and let there be a famine and they raise the price. So Islam has put conditions. Trading is not haram, like if you buy in the shop and sell, it's perfectly fine. But some people do in certain ways which break the Sharia for our trading this and that. Many things they do. So in this way, if you break the Sharia, it's haram. If you don't break, it's not haram. So generally, you can deal in commodities, and you should. If you don't do the normally buy and sell. But some people break the rule of the Sharia and they trade in that way, which is haram. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. The RBI is considering of starting Islamic banks. How practical it is to have a musharika system? Would it be possible as we have so many window accounts? It was asked a very practical question. The RBI is considering starting Islamic bank, and I had spoken a few months earlier to the finance minister Chidambaram when I was in Saudi Arabia. And he himself told that we are thinking that whether it's possible. Because RBI has got very restrictions, a lot of restrictions, and they haven't given permission so far for a full-fledged Islamic bank. 
Islamic investment finds have been problem, Islamic bank no. And they're thinking over it. Now basic question that, will it be possible in India to run an Islamic bank where there's so much window dressing, especially in the book of accounts, will it be possible? Brother, normally if you analyze that window dressing is there in India and many other countries. I agree with you. So therefore when Islamic bank, you should realize that the various systems involved in Islamic bank, one is Musharika, one is Mudaraba, one is Murahaba. So what we're talking is the Musharika system where you become partners. That suppose a client says that he requests 200,000 rupees and he says you give me 100,000 rupees. So the Islamic bank finances 100,000 rupees. They become partners. Where the 50-50 percent partner he says no I am working. So give me 20 percent for my labor and the balance 80 percent we share 50. That means bank gets 40 percent profit he gives 60 percent. 20 percent for his labor and 40 percent. Or he said no we will do it together. So in the Musharika system in Islam what you're talking about window dressing, there can be various conditions put by the Islamic bank. They can put a condition that if they're equal partners, you cannot take any decision on your own without our sanction. Point number one. So they cannot buy or sell any good without their permission. Point number two, even we will keep an accountant of our own. That means accounting will be done by their accountant and the accountant from the bank. So you can put any conditions. Not that you give the money and you leave it. If you trust the client, you can say, fine, I trust you. I will not keep an accountant. So depending upon the percentage, if the finance percentage is small, yet they can demand what they want, so then the customer will agree or disagree. Even in a conventional bank, when a person, when an entrepreneur goes to take a loan, they check various things. What business you want to do? What is the projected profit? He gives the account. They see and they analyze and finally they give on basis on how the client, whether he's going to go in profit or loss. If they have a doubt, whether he will not get a profit, is going to go in a loss, they will not finance him. So similarly, in an Islamic bank, when a person goes to take loan, that doesn't mean the Islamic bank will just give him loan. Even they will check the pros and cons. But the difference is, there it's a fixed percentage. 10% fixed, or 8%, or 12%. Here, yeah? profit is fixed. But I do agree with you, if you leave it completely on the client, if he's dishonest, he can manipulate. So in this case, the bank can put conditions, you cannot buy and sell without a permission or you can buy any small amount, any amount bigger than this amount, our sanction is required, we'll have an accountant, we'll have a man and they'll have to pay for that also. All these, all conditions can be put. So depending upon the trust between the bank and the client and the entrepreneur, you can put conditions which Islam gives permission. And one more thing, and as I mentioned earlier, that that is the reason Musharika system approximately in the international Islamic banking is about 15%. Somewhere it is 20%. Means the major finance is more on Ijara or on Murhaba rather than Musharika. Because Musharika people don't trust and they'll have to have too many conditions unless they know that the entrepreneur very well and he's really done very well in the past. So there are Musharika cases taking place. So that depends mainly in the bank. And all the conditions are put forth and the person depositing the money. Also for example in Malaysia Previous it was, the whatever profit the bank made, 30% bank kept, 70% they give to the client. So when the client gives it to the bank, then you trust the bank, wherever they want to put, they can put. So they collect everyone's money and then they choose. So whatever profit they get, if they get $100 profit, 100 rupees profit, then they will keep 30 rupees for themselves, 70 they will give it to you, because that is their service charge. So they, it has to be decided, but the bank takes the decision, who is the right entrepreneur, who is the right businessman to give to. Hope that answers the question. Any brothers? Assalamu alaikum. Referring to the hadith, Abu Bakr gave away all his possession in as sadaka. So what is the amount given as sadaka? That's why that when I say, when you read any hadith, you should be taken in context. People misunderstand the hadith. What is left in your house? Nothing. But he can't sell his house and say that even my house is in charity and he lets his family come on the street, which Abu Bakr never did that. Many people read the hadith and they conclude themselves. So therefore when you analyze the hadith, mashallah is right. What I said, you cannot let your family come on this. Didn't I say that? My thing was, you can't give everything what you have and let your family come on the street. Everything of your savings, yes, you can give that. Why can't you give? So the hadith says, Hazrat Umar, may Allah breathe with him. He said, I have given half. And he thought he was the best. In quantity, yes. In terms of money, yes. Had Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him, he said, I gave everything of my saving, what's left at home, nothing. Of his saving, that doesn't mean he sells his house, he sells his clothes, and then say, fine, 
So that means he has trust in Allah and his Rasul. But if he sells his house also, and that's not allowed in Islam. As a general, if someone does that, we're required. See again, this is a general statement what I made. Suppose someone says, example, hypothetical, okay, find so much thing is required for jihad. And it's a must, and if Prophet's life is in danger, I would still live in my house for that. You understand? Nah? But generally I'm talking about. So that was for jihad. But even that time his house was there with him. And secondly, if the Prophet also asked for jihad, that will you sell your house? Had Abu Bakr Malai please surely would have said yes. Not that you have said no, but that is a different situation. But they talk about general charity. Because they, if you require that we should love Allah and His Rasul more than ourselves and our wives also. So in that context, if you realize, even if some Sahaba says this house also, it's allowed in Islam. I'm talking about general context. So when the Prophet said, trust in God but tie our camel. So here that means he's not tying his camel. But that's a general situation. So therefore, when you hadith you read, Quran you read, you should understand the various hadith and no two say hadith will contradict. So many people read one hadith and they think that it's a benchmark. Like many people read the way Prophet was kind and the way character mistakes. There are some of the hadith the way he corrected the mistakes. I would say that how is he correcting? So depending upon the situation, some mistakes the Prophet corrected on the spot, some later on, some he threw stones also and corrected. So depending upon the situation. So therefore many a time people pick up hadith and they say this is the lifestyle of the Prophet. Yes it is. It is one of the lifestyles of the Prophet. So what I said is not wrong and what hadith you could also is not wrong. Hope that answers the question. Regarding duties, the Prophet wasallam said, whoever sleeps over a prayer or forgets it, he must pray it as soon as he remembers it. There are no expiations other than that. Putting queries. How to offer salah while traveling? Can a woman travel without a mahram? Is it true that actions are based upon intention? Taking responsibilities. To answer all your questions and queries, join me in Umdat al Ahkam. Let's ponder the bestowed knowledge to approach the correct Islam. Join Asim al Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 10 30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 11 30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Zar, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, said, Three are the persons with whom Allah would neither speak on the day of resurrection, nor would look at them, nor would absolve them and there is a painful chastisement for them. The Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, repeated it three times. Abu Zar, may Allah be pleased with him, remarked, they failed and they lost. Who are these persons, Messenger of Allah? Upon this he, the Holy Prophet said, they are the dragger of lower garments, the one who reminds others of his gifts and the seller of goods by false oath. Sahih Muslim, Volume 1, Book of Faith, Hadith Number 192.
Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, sustainer of the world. Watch Little Wonders at their best in The Wonder Kids, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum. Brother, I want to know whether uh, mediclaim is allowed in Islam for medical treatment is quite expensive today. As far as the question regarding mediclaim, taking mediclaim policy, is it allowed or not? The answer is the same as the answer for insurance policy. Mediclaim per se is not haram. But you see to it that the mediclaim is not involved with riba activity. Many are not involved with riba activity as long as they take your premium and they invest in Islamic investments or in a way which is Islamic which is not against the Sharia and then you take such a policy it's totally allowed but if they take your money and keep it in a bank and they give the fees of a treatment from the interest money then it's haram hope that answers the question any brothers? yes brother Assalamu alaikum brother in Mauritius there was a lecture and in spite of all the convincing talks very few Hindus are accepting Islam compared to the Christians what is the reason behind this? Well, that's the question that as far as Mauritius is concerned, somewhat like Chota Bharat, small India. So why are the Hindus? They come to Islam very slowly as compared to the Christians. Point number one to be noted is that the Christians are more closer to Islam than the other non-Christians and the non-Muslims. The Hindus, that's it. Point number one. Point number two, very few Muslims are actually working amongst the Hindus. That is the major point. Very few Muslims are working amongst the Hindus and they are studying the scriptures. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 64 Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. There are very few Muslims who are actually working amongst the Hindus. If the number of Muslims working among the Hindus increase, Inshallah, Inshallah, I feel those people coming towards Islam from the Hindu community will also increase. So the main reason is this, that very little research has been done. You will hardly find any books written on Islam and Hinduism, very few. Islam and Christianity, thousands of books. In the world, number of human beings claiming to be Christians, more than double the number of human beings who claim to be Hindus. But yet, there are very few Muslims working amongst the Hindus. If this percentage increases, yet Alhamdulillah, in spite of that, mashallah, mashallah, there are hundreds and thousands of Hindus in India were accepting Islam. I am not aware of the situation of Mauritius. They have been there once. But here also, mashallah. But I feel it should increase much more. Hope that answers the question. Any brother have any questions? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, brother, what is your opinion on multi-level or chain marketing? Brother asked the question, what is my opinion on multi-level marketing? Amway, etc. In any business, if any of the Sharia law is not broken, it is halal, in short. If it is against the Islamic Sharia at Salam, this is the basic guideline. Now, in multi-level marketing, many a times, they cheat. They break the Sharia, therefore it's Haram. If you know for multi-level marketing, which does not cheat and following all the Sharia, that's allowed. But many of the multi-level marketing which I have studied, it does break the Sharia. Not all. And there are fatwas given in America that Amway per se, which is very famous. Amway, many of the Islamic scholars in America said it is haram. So first we have to identify how does it work, is it fooling the people, is it cheating, is it gambling, all this and then give the fatwa. So I'm not saying all multi-layer marketing is haram, I'm not saying that at all. Depending on what are the pros and cons, what way do they give promises, what way do they calculate the business, what is involved, what is the product of the business. Based on all these things, we can analyze whether it's allowed or not. Hope that answers the question. Any brothers? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. What is the status of the people who are mentally unstable or retarded? Whether they will go to hell or heaven? We ask the question that what happens to those people who are mentally disturbed? So whether they go to or Jannah. If a person is mentally unstable, so whatever he did when he was mentally stable, that will be accountable. If a person is unconscious, and in that unconsciousness, or is subconscious, if he does anything wrong, if he is unconscious and doesn't pray, he is forgiven. Similarly, if he is mentally disturbed, see one is mentally disturbed is not a question, mentally disturbed is possible. If he is mentally retarded, 
or completely mentally insane. So in that insanity, if he does something wrong, he will not be held responsible. Allah is not unjust. But whatever he did before that will be taken into account. So if a Hindu child is mentally retarded from day one, and if he dies at the age of 40, inshallah he will be not held responsible. But if a person becomes mentally retarded at a particular age, so whatever he did before that, Allah will take into account. Irrespective of whether Muslim or non-Muslim. Hope that answers the question. Yes. Why did the Pakistan government declare certain community as kafir? So that was the question that why did the Pakistan government consider certain community as non-Muslims? I don't know what is. Say directly, I don't know which community you're talking about. No, I'm in the field. So say directly, why are you getting scared? Why did the Pakistan government, what is talking about the Qadianis, why did they declare them as non-Muslims? As I mentioned in my early answer, the first question was to me. These people, they consider that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the last Nabi but not the last Rasul. So the Qadianis, what they say, that Prophet Muhammad is Khatim and Nabeen. He is the last Prophet. But their definition of Prophet is someone who has got a message. News, Nama. News. But they say he's not the last Rasul. No, Rasul also means he's a high level of. That is news. This is message. The messenger is higher according to Arabic. But they, they convert it. So what they say, that Prophet Muhammad is not the last Rasul. And Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, Qadian, he was a Rasul. So therefore, if anyone who says that any Rasul is going to come after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he does kufr. So the thing is that, that that is the reason because they have gone against the Quran. See, one thing is going against the Quran unintentionally, in ignorance. Not that everyone, I don't claim I follow 100% Quran. Don't have alcohol, somebody has alcohol. That's also wrong after knowing Kuf. But this is a higher level. That is the reason the Pakistan government, they condemned them and they said that they are non-Muslims and that is the reason many of them had to flee. So they changed the base to London now. Hope that's the question. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Brother, can we have a common currency like uh, euro or etc? And uh, can we have a common police? May I ask the question that can we have one common economy, one common currency like the euro? Or can we have common police? See, the best this can only take place if we have the khilafa. In Islam, there's nothing like country boundaries in Islam. We believe one ummah. This can only take place if you have a common Khilafa. Now how can that take place is a different issue. So many scholars have given strategies how can Khilafa take place. Khilafa was there earlier. It was abolished. The last Caliphate, Khilafat was Turkey. When it was abolished, there was a movement against that in Bombay, which is from Baikala known as Khilafat House. Khilafat House. So Mahatma Gandhi and all the other people, they took a movement. Khilafat House means Again, this, when they were abolishing in Turkey, the last, whether right or wrong, not that was a very good Khalifa, but the Khilafah system was there. Later on, as time passed, they were not following the Sharia properly and that's the reason it tumbled down. So now many people are trying to get it back. If we have the Khilafat, then Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, we'll have a common Khalifa. And if that Khalifa gives any ruling, any fatwa, the whole Muslim Ummah should follow. But unfortunately, there are groups which are not very close to Islam, some are close to Islam and trying to strive, some are not close to Islam, are doing for their own benefit, some are doing for the benefit of Islam. So different groups are there, but we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that once we have that Khilafat, then all these things will be. Without Khilafat, a common euro, we can have a common real or a drum, we can have. But everything, police comment, this comment, that everything that will only take place, Khilafat takes place. But without Khilafat, we can have a common currency, but then all should get together, and combine and agree with the rules and regulation laid down by the economical condition of most of the country, it can be done. But the best is Khilafah will take care of everything. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Khilafah is reinstated. Then inshallah, once we have that, then no one can twist the arm. Inshallah. United we stand. So waiting for that day and we strive towards it and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that make the condition of the Muslim better. Hope that's the question.